I brought my mother to vote at the Southside Homes Community Center, only to have been told after 60 years of voting that she had been purged from the system. Even as the coronavirus raises new questions about the safety of voting, some Black Americans say they are encountering obstacles that remind them of the past. I cannot come to grips with it that my mother, my own mother, cannot vote after all that she's been through. She came through the civil rights era. She said, I have gone through many years where I could not vote. I want to vote, Cynthia. The right to vote was hard won for African-American women in particular, who played a significant and sometimes overlooked role in a struggle that cut across both the suffrage and civil rights movements. And they remain at the forefront of the fight to expand access to the ballot today. You gotta make sure you go vote. Sheila Tyson works with girls in Birmingham, Alabama on civics education and political engagement. We introduced them to the, the whole history of voting, how the state house is ran, how do you pass a bill, how do you get your brother, your church member, to actually participate in the voting system. So we're going to register you guys to vote today. And after we are educating people and letting them know the importance of using voting to exercise the right to state your opinion and have a say-so in your everyday life. You know, they always come up My grandmama quoted, she said, when you invest and educate a man, you have educated a man. But when you invest and educate a woman, you have educated a nation. The work of the Birmingham students is rooted in a tradition of activism by African-American women who came before them. These are women who have a long history working together, going all the way back to the Civil War, some of them. They come out of a distinct history, a history that is not captured in a narrative about women's suffrage associations. The long fight was officially over. The campaign for women's suffrage celebrated the ratification of the 19th Amendment in 1920. The suffrage movement was a long story of hard work and heartaches, but it was crowned by victory. But that victory was not felt equally among all women. My grandmother was born in 1919, the year that women were given the right uh, to vote. However, she was African-American and lived in Louisiana. She did not cast a ballot until the 1960s. African-American women, even after a constitutional amendment, will still be disenfranchised by state laws, by poll taxes, by grandfather clauses, by understanding tests, by whites-only primary. So black women turned to their own networks, including those formed through black women's clubs, which had been organizing for decades on voting rights and other campaigns like anti-lynching. And now they dug in. So how do you pay your poll tax? How do you confront an official who imposes on you illiteracy tests? This is the on-the-ground work that has to happen in order for black women to um, see the results of um, women's suffrage in a meaningful way. We was met in Indianola with, by policemen, highway patrolmen, and they only allowed two of us in to take the literacy test at the time. Women like Fannie Lou Hamer, Septima Clark, and Diane Nash carried that fight forward into the civil rights era, facing violence and imprisonment in the process. It wasn't until the country was forced to come face to face with the reality of what black Americans were experiencing that things began to change. Hundreds of marchers heading to the state capitol in Montgomery to protest restrictions on black voting were brutally beaten by sheriff's deputies on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. America could no longer deny what was really going on. To see the utter brutality, I think, shocked the conscience of the country in a way. After the violence in Selma, President Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act into law in 1965. It outlawed barriers like literacy tests and put places with a history of discrimination under federal oversight. Since the passage of the 1965 Voting Rights Bill, close to one million citizens in seven states 
have been given the most basic right of citizenship, the vote. Negro voter registration in 11 deep southern states has increased 50% since the 1964 election. The new law meant that Daniel's grandmother voted for the first time, and that more black officials would be elected to office, including her father. My father was the first black elected to the police jury in our parish, in Wynn Parish, Louisiana. And he was able to enter that election and certainly to get elected because of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And later, the Voting Rights Act came to play a role in Daniel's own life when she began working in the Department of Justice's voting section, which was responsible for enforcing voting laws across the country. There was continuing work around ensuring that particularly people of color in the South had free, fair, non-discriminatory access to the ballot. The Voting Rights Act required states with a history of discrimination to get federal approval for any voting changes to ensure they were fair to minority voters. Daniels remembers one time when they intervened to stop a polling station from being moved to a particular building. The place it was being moved to used to be the place where the Klan met, where the Ku Klux Klan met. Certainly elderly African-Americans would not enter into this building to cast a ballot or for any other reason because of the reminders of the historical past and because of the, discrim the discrimination and pain, right, that existed in that building. But nearly 50 years after the Voting Rights Act was passed, Shelby County, Alabama, says the law has outlived its time. A Supreme Court decision undercut a crucial section of the act, effectively freeing states from that federal oversight. John Merrill, Alabama's Secretary of State, says that time had come. The days that we have had in the past, in Alabama and other states in the Union, where people have attempted to take advantage of individuals by making it more difficult for them to participate in the process, are long gone. Merrill defends the state's law requiring a photo ID to vote, saying it can combat fraud. But multiple studies of voting across the country have found such fraud to be extremely rare, and opponents of voter ID laws say they disproportionately impact people of color, the elderly, and low-income voters. Merrill disagrees. Nobody's doing more than we are to make it easy for people to participate in the process. While some states have embraced reforms like automatic voter registration, many others have made it harder to vote. Moving polling places, closing polling places, purging voter rolls are all things that are now being done without um, federal approval, and we're seeing the shrinking of the right to vote. Now, with the coronavirus making the safety of polling places an issue, there's a new push to expand the right to vote by mail. But that's being fought by conservative groups. State and federal officials now rethinking how to hold an election during an outbreak. COVID-19 is exposing fault lines that already existed in many areas of the country in regards to inequities that exist. The fight to vote has always been about power who has it, and who can get it. Meanwhile, black women have shown a powerful commitment to voting over the years, and they've emerged as a formidable force in elections. And it's all about making people aware of what's going on in their community. They want to vote, but when you lose all hope and you don't feel like your vote counts, you got to make people understand you can control what actually goes on in your community. In March, thousands gathered in Selma at the Edmund Pettus Bridge to commemorate the 55th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. Sheila Tyson brought young women from her student group to be there for the event. They plan to keep registering voters and getting people to vote ahead of the election. Black women, we are strong and we are hard workers. And it's worth the fight. It's worth the work that we have to put in to make sure that everyone have an equal right to vote. 